Good morning and welcome to another session for us today. We are going to start with neurology today. So let's do this one. The nurse is evaluating a pediatric client for possible neurology concern. Which assessment findings need follow up from the healthcare provider? Select all that apply. Number one, have a high pitch cry. Number two, sleeps in a bot like position. Number three, deep tendon reflexes are two plus. Number four, pupils are eight millimeter in diameter. And number five, eyes roll in opposite direction when turning head side to side. Five options and let's talk about that question. It's a pediatric client, doesn't say how old. And it says it's for a possible neurology concern. So you're looking for something which is wrong or bad because the question is asking which assessment findings need follow up, follow up. What do you need follow up for when there is something wrong? You know, something is not right. That is the things you want to follow up for. You want to do more tests on, right? So basically we are looking for something bad here. And I see the answers coming. So great, good job on trying to solve this. We are going to go about this together, right? The number one says, have a high pitch cry. Is that okay or not? Now, from your answers, I can see you're thinking about it. Now, this is going to be my answer to you. There is something we call as neuro cry. Okay, neuro cry. Now, in, in many classes, I talk about this, like any time you hear that there is a high pitch cry or you see that in a question, always think about a chance of some neurological issue. Now, why high pitch cry is so associated with a neurological problem? And somebody might be thinking okay, that might be increased elevated um, intracranial pressure, could be, could be right, but why exactly? Why is that pitch of a cry is associated with a neurological problem? The reason is it is with the brainstem. Now, you know, we have the brainstem, we have the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brainstem, which is kind of in the base part right there. So the brainstem is the one which controls the pitch of a cry. Now, if somebody is having, like a baby, is having a high pitch cry, what is that actually telling you? It is telling you that there is, might be a problem with the brainstem area. Maybe there is a meningeal irritation. Maybe there is more pressure. Maybe there is going to be possible brain herniation or, or brainstem issues, right? I mean, we don't know what is going on. We don't have a diagnosis, but this is enough for us to think, critically think and make that clinical correlation and there is a problem. So one is my answer, okay? I'm going to say yes to that. The second one says, sleeps in a bot-like position. Now, what is a bot-like position? Let me show you the picture. I'm going to talk about this, uh, some of the things. Yes, it is called opistotonus poster, opistotonus poster, right? Tonus is like stiffness, stiffness, like the, the, the bot-like stiffness the baby is having as the head is all hyper extended the neck is extended why the baby is taking this poster or opistotonus poster because it relieves some of that meningeal irritation the baby is having so if a baby is sleeping like this it is a possibility that there is some meningeal irritation now what are the other things you will see in babies even though our options doesn't say that you might see poor feeding, bulging anterior fontanel. We already talked about high pitch cry, but the anterior fontanel the baby is having that might be bulging or are swelling or, um, you know, it's like convex, it, it's bigger, it, it's, it's bulging out. Why? Because there could be increased intracranial pressure. Now, please also remember that when normal babies, when they cry and if the anterior fontanel is not closed yet, when they cry, 
it can go up a little bit but that's only when they are crying so that one you will not be worried but if you're already thinking that the baby has some meningeal problem or some neurological problem and you see that there is a bulging fontanel and it's staying like that that is something you need to report on or, or you need to follow up on do you see how this is different? Everything, each small thing has a point there, right? So remember that. And the sun setting eyes, I think this is something which is very easy to recognize as a neurological issue because we learned about the cranial nerves and we learned that number three, which is oculomotor, right? Cranial number three. Oculomotor is the one which helps us to look up, look up, right? Or it also helps us with the eyelids. It also helps us with our perla, pupillary reaction, right? So in these babies, those number three, the cranial nerve number three, the oculomotor is probably compressed. And when it is compressed, you know, they won't be able to look up and they lose that function. And that's why their eyes, this poor baby's eyes looks like it's a sun setting eyes, which is, I mean, you can see that there is a possible hydrocephalus too, right? So that's the pressure which is causing that. Again, neurological problem. See this uh, option we have, it says deep tendon reflexes are two plus. And I saw that some of you guys answered that as a problem, but deep tendon reflexes which are two plus is actually okay. It is normal here. So this is the deep tendon reflex scale. And these are the deep tendon reflexes we usually check. What are the deep tendon reflexes? The biceps. And then we have the brachioradialis. Like if you click here, or if you turn you do the reflex hammer, your hand will go like this. That's the brachioradialis. And this is the triceps. And then there is one on the knee. You can see the knee hammer or the reflex hammer they are using. And if you do it in the knee, it, it goes like this. That's the patellar. And then we have the Achilles, right? The Achilles is the one where it's, it's kind of in that angle, this area, where when you do that, your feet will go like this, right? And the scale says if it is two plus, that's normal. So let's go back to the question one more time. Deep tendon reflexes are two plus. Is that okay? It is okay. It is fine. Now this one, eight millimeter diameter, what is the normal diameter of a pupil on, on, a, on, on a person? We will say somewhere between three to five, right? Three to five millimeter is supposed to be okay or normal. So when it says that it's eight millimeter, I will say three to five is normal. So eight is definitely telling me that there is more dilation. It is not okay because I'm worried about the cranial nerves. We know how oculomotor is going to help with that pupillary constriction, dilation, and there is so many other uh, cranial nerves which help us with the movement of the eyes too, right? So if it is more than normal, like dilated more than normal, probably it needs some follow-up. There is something wrong. So, so far, we got this as a problem, we got this as a problem, we said this is okay, and we got this as a problem. Now, what about the last one? It says, eyes roll in opposite direction when turning head side to side. Now, that's called doll's eye, and I have a doll here, I wanted to show you the doll. By the way, this is Sarah, okay, this is my daughter's um, birthday gift, or, or I think Santa Claus gave it to her. So anyway, so this is Sarah. And, and, and in this one, you can see her eyes is kind of fixed there, right? So if I turn her head to this side, or this side, is her eyes turning with it? Is her eyes are moving like this? No, right? It's not. That's called doll's eye. So what is supposed to happen in normal people when they turn her head this way or this way? Look at me. When I turn my head this way, where is my eyes going, okay? My eyes are going this way. My head is turning this way, but my eyes are going that way, like this, 
right? My eyes are going this way, my head is turning this way. But what about Sarah? It doesn't turn, it, it goes with the head. So is it okay to go with the head? It's not okay. If it goes with the head, we say it's a doll's eye. Doll's eye tells us that there is cranial nerve problem, okay? And most people who are brain dead will have doll's eye. Their eyes will be fixed. So whatever you turn, whenever you turn, the pupils, the eyes just goes with it. It doesn't go opposite. Normal is going opposite. Okay, so here it says eyes roll in opposite direction when turning head to head. Is that okay? It is okay. It is good, right? So it's a good thing. So do we have to select that? Mm -mm. Let me show you the picture too. I have another picture here. This is, oh, those eyes are also called oculocephalic reflex. Okay, oculo means, oculo means eyes. Cephalic means it's our head. So oculocephalic means it's something with the eyes and the head connection, right? Let's look at that one more time here. It's a neurology concern and we are looking for something bad. So number one is bad, have a high pitch cry. Number two is bad because it's a position problem. Three is okay, four is bad and five is okay. So what's our answer? One, two, four. All right, all right. So I'm hoping that that made sense, right? It was a great question. And now you know how to apply that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to say before we stop today. This is my, um, just a small um, you know, motivation tip for you today, for this, this time. I know so many of you are dreaming of success, which is, which is great, we need that. But please remember that's only the starting point. Everybody can dream about success, but who is going to make it are the people who get up and do something about it. Now it can be as small as reading one page a day. It can be as small as taking your alarm clock and setting it up for half an hour more earlier than yesterday. It can be as small as doing five questions more just to practice. It can be as small as taking a little time away from your social media. Whatever is needed, please do something about it because dreaming is not going to give you that success. It is only people who act are going to get the success. And it's okay, some people can run a marathon. Some people can do it in one week. Some people can do it in one month. Some might take six months. It's fine as long as you are doing something every day. That's the key. We have to do something every day which makes it closer to the goal. Dream it, wish for it, but also take action. If not, it will stay there as a dream. Now, that's not what we want, right? We want to make it a reality. We want to make it a successful life for us. So remember to do something. Don't compare yourself to anybody else because we are unique. We have our own way of doing things. It is okay no matter how long we take. The important thing is we do it, right? The only person you should be comparing yourself is you from yesterday. Are you better from yesterday? Then you're good. That's all we want to know, right? So remember that and we will stop here today.